market movers. Things have been going pretty crazy right now in the Pokemon market. I mean, things are going crazy all the time, right? I mean, some of these cards have really been moving. Remember, they would be going up or going down. Stuff's happening all over the place, right? Scarlet and Violet is just doing very, very well right now with, you know, a lot of cards just gaining value, which is incredible. But not only that, we've started to see some other cards from older generations actually doing well, which is quite interesting. So today we'll take a look at TCG Player at the biggest movers and shakers of what's been going on in the market right now. So let's take a look at this. We've got the biggest shakeups happening. Uh, I don't know why I did that, right? And uh, then we got the Ridge Drago, starting things off, kicking things off, Silver Tempest, we're going back to Sword and Shield. This one actually surprised me. Uh, clearly it's a playable card, but it surprised me mainly because I was going through a load of bulk. I say bulk, but like bulk Vs and V stars. And I kind of just put this to one side, right? I kind of just put this amongst all the bulk, didn't really care. Then I saw someone selling this on uh, Facebook, on the marketplace. And I was like, why is it so expensive? It's just a V star. And then I looked up. And yeah, it fetches a pretty, pretty good price point. It has been dropping though. So this card is currently going for around about $7.74. And it has been falling, but it did rise, right? We look in three months ago, this card was around about $3. It went all the way up to $15. Bonkers. Like, that is insane, right? We'll go back over the past year. And look, we can really see this card was just at a dollar. Less than a dollar even. And then it started to climb. And then bang, it went all the way up to, yeah, $15. And he's now dropped about 50% coming back down. That's still incredible. Like, that's incredible. Uh, I end up selling mine in the end. I think I end up selling it for like nine, ten pounds, which was pretty impressive. But yeah, really interesting one with that Reggie Drago. Then we got the Ivysaur from 151. We've seen a lot of 151 cards starting to climb, uh, which is quite interesting because they've kind of been it kind of stagnant really uh, for a long time. Even though sealed product has been going up, but the single card prices haven't, which was kind of strange. But now we're starting to see. The single cards start to climb even though there's more 151 coming at the end of the year it's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen to the prices of these cards because at the moment this oversaw is on the uptick you know it is uh you know it's moving 23 dollars right now we go back over the past year and you like i said this car's just been going up and down like a yo-yo for a long time and it hasn't really moved but recently it has moved and it's gone up to 23 percent which is actually pretty good going it did dip and now it's bounced back up. I mean, its highest ever point was 24. So it's just trying to get up to that point. But to be honest, it's doing really well. And like I said, 151 is super expensive. Especially over here in the UK. Like, it needs like £10 a booster pack, which is crazy. So, yeah, pretty insane. Then we've got the Gengar and Mimikyu GX. Uh, this one's interesting. This was just a regular GX, or Tag Team GX, from Team Up. And it was weird, right? This card shot massively uh, earlier on this year, which was kind of bizarre, right? We go back over the past year. And you can really see what happened in this card. It's at, you know, pretty good price point, to be honest. I mean, Team Up is very expensive anyway across the board. If you look around about $30, yeah. Yeah. And it's slow growth, which I expect to happen. And then it went from $54 and it doubled in price, right, to $110. Imagine buying it at $110. That would sting, right? But imagine buying it here and then selling it there. That would have been very good, right? And then this card has gone from $110 now down to $52. So it's dropped 50%. Uh, in the past like three months which is uh a big ouchie let's be fair it is a big mover not looking good for that one then we've got the rare candy this one's from skull and violet i think skull and violet base i think um so this one's an interesting one skull and violet base a lot of cards in the set is actually moving up as well we've seen it with the guard of Wild, with miriam um but this is rare candy this is one of the trainer cards gold coming in so over the past year this card has been going down though well yeah kind of going down it's pretty level but overall has been dropping and it's quite interesting because you know Scarlet and Violet base is super cheap like you can still buy a booster box for like $90 it's crazy cheap right now uh, so we're starting to see a lot of the card prices fall so we've seen a lot of movements happening with the card prices some of the cards are bouncing back even though the booster boxes are you know not really moving much speaking of which there we go we've got the card of War up next so this one has fallen uh, a little bit out of favor so we go back the past year and we obviously kept seeing the decline of Scarlet and Violet base cards for the longest time. And then we saw a resurgence, right? $18 going up to $34, nearly doubled in price. It was like, oh, wait a minute. We're getting some good movers in Scarlet and Violet base. Nope. It was just kind of a blip because now it's kind of gone back down to $27. So it's only dropped like $7. But to climb that much and then to fall a little bit, and I mean, it did actually drop a little bit more. 
is actually quite interesting. Still a super cheap card in the grand scheme of things. You know, you can get the majority of the set. I would probably say you probably complete the set for maybe the cost of two or three booster boxes. So it's it's pretty crazy for Scotland Volley Base, how cheap it is. Giovanni's Charisma from 151. This is the non-special illustration rare. Even though the special illustration rare with the Persian is way better. This is just a normal Giovanni's Charisma. This one's been bouncing around over the past few months. We go back over the past year and it's starting to climb. It's around four or five dollars and it's starting to move upwards. Um, which is quite interesting, you know, it, it, I would assume it sees play, um, but this is really, really cool. Then we've got Prime Catcher, this is one of the most popular Ace Trainer cards, highly playable card. Fetching, I think it's the most expensive, because it's fetching $22, I believe it's the most expensive Ace Trainer card so far. Uh, and we're looking around about 22 it did actually drop a little bit from 27 So we go back over the past, what has it been like, yes, go six months, there we go. So we go about six months, this card was fetching a $35 price point for Temporal Forces, one of the biggest cards in the set. And it did fall, you know, a lot of temporal forces being opened, expect the card to fall, pretty natural. And then it did climb, it did climb back up, to, like I say, to $30, and is now dipped back down to that $22. So it has somewhat corrected itself, and continuing to trickle upwards. Big climbers, we've got the Roaring Moon EX from Paradox Rift, highly playable card. We're looking at just a regular EX that has gone from $2.50, dropped a little bit down to like $1.50, and is now up to nearly $5.00 which is very, very impressive. We go back to the last six months and it's trying to get back to where it was. It was about six, seven dollars before. So it did drop and it's going back up, which is interesting because Paradox Rift is relatively cheap and easy to get hold of right now. Uh, potential reprints happening later on this year. So we could see the price of this card drop even more, uh, but it is seeing a lot of play and it's doing well. So the regular EX is holding good value. Right, and then we've got some more cards coming in. We've got some more movers. This time we're looking at gold cards and there's some Big movers with gold cards. We've got the basic metal energy from Shrouded Fable. Look at this one. This is just a, a normal metal energy gold. I remember having a, a metal energy. I think it was some sword and shield. I can't remember say it was. Maybe Evolving Skies. I can't remember. But basic metal energy doubled in value. Shrouded Fable is a set where uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a hit and miss set, to be honest. In my opinion, I think it's one of the weakest sets in Scarlet and Violet era. Kind of a bit lackluster set. But look, we've had a card here that's doubled in value. Since it's released, don't forget the ETPs came out a little bit later. Open up the packs was a little bit skewed. But the fact is that even though more people open up the packs, it has been going up. So that's a really interesting one indeed. Then we've got the Urban Vessel. This is the biggest card from Shroud of Fable. Now it's overtaken the uh, Cassiopeia and all the other cards in the set. So the most expensive card is a gold trainer card. Highly playable, big money card. $65. This card's gone up pretty well, you know, from 50 which is still a hefty price point. At 65. So, to give you an example, that is the most expensive card in Shroud of Fable. The most expensive card is about $65, which isn't too bad. Um, but I do expect more and more of the set to be opened and more and more of other cards and sets start to fall, especially if they're not playable. This is holding its value due to its playability, you know, and it looks awesome. Imagine playing four of these in your deck, it'd be super, super bling when they're all gold. Then we got the Temple of Sinnoh. This one's from Astral Radiance. This one has been going up and it has bounced back. Awesome looking card though. Pretty sweet. We go over the past year and we can see that this card was, you know, relatively cheap, around $7. Then it did spike all the way up to $20. And it did drop back down to $11 and it's gone back up to around about $16, $17, which is pretty good. So it's up on that up price. Astral Radiance um, hasn't really done much recently. You know, it did go up in value. With the booster boxes but overall the set has stayed pretty pretty steady then we have the mew ex from legendary treasures like i said we're going back in time with this one we're going real back in time beautiful card though absolutely beautiful 56 dollars uh, over the past three months it went from 45 to 56 we're gonna go over the past year this set is old um so we can see this card there around about 35 and it has been climbing steadily i mean the set's super expensive you might as well buy this card probably raw than trying to open it in a booster pack uh -huh just because it's less than the price of a booster pack, even with the increased value. But it is a beautiful, stunning card, and it's nice to see uh, a card like this gain value, because it is just amazing, right? The colors, just the design. I'm not a huge fan of like older generational cards, like in the black and white era, or it's stuff like that, but I can't deny this is a nice Mew. So there you have it. Those are the biggest movers over the last few weeks, or past month. And it's kind of interesting, right? We've seen a lot of highly playable cards pushing value up, and that's what we expect to see. Scarlet and Violet is, has some really good playable cards that do hold a pretty good value. I mean, when you look at a normal EX is holding $7, that's pretty good. We started to see Shroud of Fable cards starting to shift upwards with that Urban Vessel. 
uh, and the energy as well, which is kind of interesting. And yeah, pretty much across the board, I mean, you are starting to see some other cards like the Gengar and the Mimikyu tag team go down in price and kind of sell to normal levels rather than the inflated levels. But even when you come to the more cheaper cards, like the lower value ones, even cards that are, you know, tripled in value from $2 to $6, it all adds up, you know, and especially if those cards are a lot more common, you might have more copies of them and stuff like that. I mean, you know, I have some of them, you know, like the Reggie Drago V-Star, for instance, I had like three or four of them, you know, three or four of them. And I thought they were just bulk. I thought they were just $1 cards. I mean, they were. And I was able to just sell them for like £10 a piece. So I managed to get £40 for a play set of four. And I thought they were like £4 for four. That's how bad it was, right? But no, it's just it's just the way it goes. So it does add up uh, and is really, really interesting. If you made this far into the video and you've enjoyed it, make sure to smash the like button and make sure to subscribe for more Pokemon content. And let me know your thoughts down in the comments. With these movers, is there any that you have in your collection from this list? Like I say, go through, have a look, see what you got. Some things you may think is bulk like I did, like regular EXs and V-Stars. In actual fact, they're worth a pretty penny, which is really nice to see. But that's it for me, guys, in today's video. If you want to watch more Pokemon content, then make sure to click the video on the screen. And of course, make sure to hit that subscribe button. But as always, you guys are legends. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.